The human brain is constantly exposed to the world's stimuli and processes them. The human brain also constantly generates responses, for example, movements. This leads to the following causal chain: stimuli to brain to responses. Researchers try to gain detailed insights into how certain stimuli are processed and how certain responses are generated by the human brain. Neuroimaging technologies allow them to measure aspects of activity in the human brain. Commonly used functional neuroimaging techniques to record brain activity during different experiments are functional magnetic resonance imaging, electroencephalography, magnetoencephalography, or near infrared spectroscopy. As different experimental paradigms allow for different causal statements, we propose to distinguish between stimulus and response-based paradigms. In a stimulus-based paradigm, brain activity may be measured during an experiment where repeatedly either the subject's left or right hand is stimulated. In a response-based paradigm, brain activity may be measured that precedes voluntary movements of either the left or right hand. Loosely speaking, in a stimulus-based paradigm, the brain activity after exposure to certain stimuli is measured, while in a response-based paradigm, the brain activity preceding certain responses is measured. The aim is to answer questions like how are tactile stimuli at different body sites processed by the human brain or how does the brain plan and maintain to move the left or right hand to answer such questions one needs to identify systematic differences between the brain state features for the different experimental conditions this however is very difficult for neuroimaging data to help with this powerful machine learning algorithms are commonly trained to obtain so-called encoding or decoding models encoding models take the experimental condition as input and output what the brain state features might look like for this particular experimental condition whereas decoding models take brain state features as input and output what the corresponding experimental condition might be these models are then analyzed to identify relevant features for example a brain state feature is relevant if it is found to be crucial for decoding the experimental condition. It is tempting to conclude that these relevant features are affected by certain stimulus or causing a certain response. This kind of causal insight might help understand the human brain and how it works. But are such conclusions justified and valid? Which causal statements are warranted and which ones are not supported by empirical evidence? To tackle this question, we rely on a sound framework of causality that is well known in other disciplines and relate to the notion of relevance in encoding or decoding models to well-defined statistical properties, namely marginal and conditional dependence. This allows us to rigorously argue that many causal conclusions that are commonly drawn and seem intuitive are not true in general. Let us try to explain one illustrative example here. Imagine there is a feature that is relevant for the decoding model to correctly predict the experimental condition. That is, it is conditionally dependent on the experimental condition given the other features. For example, the activity in the parietal cortex may be relevant to correctly predict whether the left or right hand has been stimulated. Intuitively, one may conclude from this analysis that tactile stimuli at different body sites are processed in the parietal cortex. According to our theoretical findings, this is not necessarily the case. Another possible explanation might be that the features that are actually causally affected by the stimulus are also affected by the parietal cortex. In this case, again, knowing the activity in the parietal cortex might help to decode the desired experimental condition. The parietal cortex's activity would be found relevant, although it is not causally affected by the tactile stimulus. Both scenarios are possible and compatible with the found relevance of the parietal cortex, although only in one the parietal cortex is indeed affected by the stimulus. This shows that features relevant for decoding are not in general effects of a stimulus. Similar reasonings for both the stimulus and response-based setting and for relevance or irrelevance in encoding or decoding allow us to derive a set of simple interpretation rules. These serve as a guideline for the analysis of encoding and decoding models in neuroimaging and as seen before may necessitate the reinterpretation of statements made in previous studies. In our opinion, it is important to explicate the underlying assumptions onto which the causal conclusions rely and to openly address the restrictions of the methods used. This is especially crucial when researching how the human brain works. We provide a simple rationale 
on which the causal insights can be inferred, what we can learn from encoding and decoding models in neuroimaging, without relying on restrictive assumptions and, importantly, without being misled by intuition. We hope our work contributes to a constructive habit of critically reflecting on methods to obtain causal insights from neuroimaging studies.